So this week I put together what I think might be my most flexible system to date, allowing you to make a huge range of things including scaffolding, platforms, balconies and far more in the future. Welcome to the Archive, my name's Matt. The core of the system is made of these stackable scaffolding frameworks, which connect magnetically to pretty much any height you need. These are then topped off by wood floor tiles with some tiny additions underneath, which just clip on, as do a few accessories to complete the feel of the scaffolding, tower, platform, or whatever else you're using these to represent. A lot of the inspiration for these came from games like Shadow of Mordor and Skyrim, both of which are littered with rough, simple scaffolding that provides great environments for interesting combats. To get started, I wirebrushed the hell out of all of the balsa wood I'd be using. You can do this build with other materials though, I'll be showing some alternatives near the end. Or, if you just want to save time, don't wirebrush the balsa. It's probably the most time consuming part of the project, and if you're happy with a slightly less detailed finish, you can do without it. Stain up a test strip of balsa and see what you think of the finish. Anyway, getting a strong grain this way was important for how I was going to paint it. A gentle grain just won't be as visible, especially at a distance. It also won't take the staining as well. The more I work with balsa wood, the more I realise what a perfect material it is for quality results for wood. Recently I've taken to plucking chunks from various sharp corners to make them look damaged and weathered. That's a lot harder to do cleanly with lollipop sticks. Believe me, I've tried. It's also worth bearing in mind that some balsa wood comes slightly stronger or weaker than others, so it's worth getting a feel for how tough a particular strip is before laying into it like it just insulted your mother. Once I had all of that wire brushed, I started work on the main frameworks of the scaffold. I made most of these three inches tall, though I made a few one and a half inches tall for variety. The shorter ones also let you make cave platforms like you see all the time in Skyrim. Either way, I used the same method. To get them all lined up to match, I first cut a quarter inch thick foam template with accurate right angles to two inches wide on each side, and blue tacked it to the desk so it wouldn't move. With that in place, I could line up my quarter inch balsa beams on either side, lined up with the bottom, and then use gel superglue for my quarter inch strips to put them in place from corner to corner. It's important to be careful with the glue here, any overspill will not paint properly at the final stage, so if you're nervous, stain the pieces, then glue them. It's also a good idea to wait just a little bit between gluing each piece to make sure it's sealed, just to make sure it isn't going to ping free. The final cross strip needs some extra smaller strips between it and the posts, so that it doesn't bend over the first one and throw everything curvy. I didn't do this for my build, and I regret it quite a lot. The magnets save it for the most part and hold it together, but the whole thing would have been a lot straighter if I built it like this. The next stage involves another template, this time a box that I made from two layers of one inch thick foam. I attached an extra strip at the front here, you can just cut yours to the right size to begin with. I did these from XPS mainly because the cheaper EPS is horrible to record on camera, it's too bright and gets blinding quite easily. I placed the two sides that I had on either side of the template and lined them up to slot around it, and used some flat heavy objects to hold them in place. With that done, I did the same super glue strip technique as before to join the two pieces. I made sure to give each strip enough time to dry before moving on. Finally, you can make these with different materials. You can use XPS foam strengthened by one millimeter steel wire, otherwise known as paper clips, but you can buy it as just the wire for a lot cheaper. Check out my equipment list in the description for some links. For strips, you can just hot glue them together with the wire between them. And for posts, you can do the same technique, but with thicker foam. The wood grain texture will mostly hide the lines anyway. You could also use other types of wood like coffee stirrers and so on, but the main problem here is finding a wood that's thick enough to put the magnets in. But it should be possible if you can find the right wood. Here's a nice gallery of the finished pieces while I thank my generous patrons, without whom these videos would not be made. That support is absolutely crucial. Without enough patrons in the long run, I simply couldn't afford to continue, so thank you so much to everyone who helps out. There's also a bunch of benefits to being a patron, because I really like to say thank you, including templates, printables, bonus videos, live streams, and polls on what exactly I make next. So if any of that sounds good, please check it out. Now for the connections. I aimed to minimise the magnets for this build. <gasps> Heresy! By only putting magnets in the top of each piece, putting a bit of tin onto the bottom of all of the others. For the magnets, I drilled a 3mm hole into the top after making a guidance hole with a pin. Balsa wood is so weak, you can just hold a drill bit by hand, you don't even need a drill to do this. The magnet itself, I super glued in, though hot glue might work. 
I talk more about these magnets in my other videos and there are links to where you can pick them up cheaply in my equipment list in the description. Hint, it's not Amazon. Speaking of Amazon though, anything that you do buy from the equipment list that is on Amazon helps support the channel a little bit for free. So thank you if you've been doing that. Now we have those, we can just add some tin strips to the bottom of the wood tiles in the corners to use as the platforms. On a few, I also added tin to the center so I could have four tiles on one scaffold as a sort of wider tower. These are some of the upgraded wood tiles that I'll be showing as an optional bonus upgrade video on Patreon and I've already previewed there. They have some magnetic connections for upgraded interior walls too, but you can easily use the classic foam wood tiles that I've shown how to make in the past in the stable video and just paint them to match. These are what hold the platforms together at the top and generally give some more stability when you're stacking them more than one or two high. I also made some half tiles to use as balconies, but also as bridges here between tiles or platform areas that are wider or thinner and, and so on. You can also use the rope bridge from the cobbled video to connect to these scaffolds. You can even use dull metal jewelry chain for the handrails thanks to the magnets. Though if you're using a long bridge or lone towers, I'd add some counterweight to the other side by attaching some rivets to the underside of a half tile with a magnet. Speaking of balconies though, the one difference on the half tiles was using stronger magnets on one side. I did this to give a strong connection to the walls. To add to connections to the walls, you just need to put some magnets on the outside of a few wall tiles that you intend to use with balconies. You absolutely don't need to add these to all of your wall tiles. They're very easy to add afterwards and you only really need them on the ones that you're gonna be using outdoor balconies on. To do this, I melted a hole underneath to line up with a balcony tile, leaving a thin layer of foam or whatever the facing of the tile is between them. I then popped in the magnet, put the balcony close and let the magnet flip to match it before hot gluing it in place. I used a stronger 6mm magnet on the side where there was more space in the bottom and a 3mm one where the gap is a little bit tighter. Together these give just enough grip to hold the balconies with models on top and mean you don't need to make whole wall tiles just to have balconies attached, which saves a lot of time. Worth a few magnets I think. If you still use card tabs, you could also still use that system by adding it to the bottom and slotting an extra long one in. I also made some quarter sized tiles to use on corners, again with stronger magnets on two sides, in this case the two next to each other. For placement, I put the two next to each other and then one exactly opposite of each of those. These can let the balconies extend in all sorts of weird and wonderful directions, or they can be used to let them fit onto a concave corner, even on the outer wall of buildings. To really give them some flexibility, I also made some half inch strips with tin on either side to close the gap when placing on outer corners like this. Quick, easy and lets you use these pretty much anywhere. Hang on a minute, that's an elf and safety risk that is, where's the railing? I was getting to that. The railings are also very simple, made of balsa strips, they attach to the floor using tin hidden on the inside. They are the easiest thing in the world to make, so I bashed out a whole bunch of them. I used leftover balsa from the three inch strips I used for the floor tiles to make the base half inch strips to the same length. Though you could just use two quarter inch strips and hold them together with the tin strip that I was gonna super glue on the back anyway to attach to floor tile magnets. If you use card tabs, you can super glue a card tab to the bottom of each of these with a strip of wire for strength and use them as the card tabs. I made some full length and some half length, which lets me wind them pretty much around any structure I build. For the actual railings, I used 1 8 of an inch balsa strips spaced out with a half inch between them, with each end starting a quarter inch from the edge, which then ends up giving a similar gap between pieces. Ladders were pretty similar, made mostly from 8 of an inch strips to whatever height I wanted them, with an extra bit of balsa and a tin strip on the back of the top rung to attach them to floor tile magnets. Though again, you could have the top rung super glued to a card tab. This is a lot easier to do if you stick the ends to your desk with blue tack and then use the cutting board grid to measure it. These are so small, quick and easy to build, I didn't bother making them modular. <gasps> Instead, just making them the right sizes for whatever I needed. For the short ladders, there really isn't that much point in including climbing functionality, but for a larger one, you can place tin strips on the back of the occasional step, peeking over just a little to allow a model with the kind of hollow base that I'm rather fond of, with the help of a magnet, to attach to the ladder at multiple heights and show climbing. To allow the base to fit between them, I made the gaps 5 16ths of an inch, basically just over a quarter of an inch, 
with the sides spaced three quarters of an inch apart. But other than that, the build is really straightforward. You could also make sloped floor tiles for this system, which is something I might expand upon in a future video if this video ends up being popular. Please subscribe, like, comment and share. And until next time, I'll be in the archive.